Continuing our reading in Abraham Hannibal and the Battle for the Throne by Francis Summers Cox. Today is chapter 16, A New Cross for Abraham, and the date is November, the year 1707. Eventually, Peter recovered. There was better news from the war with the Eastern Muslims, and the little group set off north. By November, they were in the beautiful little city of Vilnius, far away in Lithuania. But here Abraham and Peter nearly fell out badly, though it ended well. It was a Saturday evening, and everyone was at a big, noisy dinner in a nobleman's mansion. Most of Peter's parties and dinners were fairly noisy. Abraham was helping to serve beer and wine and vodka, but it was all quite disorganized. So every now and then, he and the other page boys could sit at a table with the guests and join in the eating and drinking. Catherine wasn't with them in Vilnius. She had gone to stay in St. Petersburg, where quite a comfortable home had been built for them over the last few months, as she was having another baby. Peter was getting drunk. He usually drank more when she wasn't around. There was a queen there at the party, the Queen of Poland, but Peter certainly didn't listen to her the way he did to Catherine. A band was playing, a cheerful dance, and a little dwarf couple, a tiny stocky man and woman dressed in magnificent ball clothes, were leaping and twirling to the tune in front of the czar's table. Peter was clapping loudly, slightly out of time with the music and laughing himself sick. Almost everyone else was clapping and laughing too, but not so as to drown out the czar. Abraham had often seen dwarves at the czar's parties, as well as normal-sized jesters. Peter adored them and found them incredibly funny. He was just pouring the czar some beer when a messenger arrived. Peter opened the letter, read it, stood up rather unsteadily, and called out, Silence! We have good news from St. Petersburg. My gracious lady Catherine has had a child, a daughter this time. We shall name her. Catherine. There were loud cheers, clapping and stomping from the guests. The lady dwarf danced around, mimicking rocking a baby in her arms, while the man dwarf lay down on the dirty floor, waved his hands and feet in the air, and bawled loudly, baby fashion. Peter held his hand up for silence. Thank you. We'll all thank God for this tomorrow in church. And now, Let's drink a toast to baby Catherine and to Catherine, her mother. Good health to both of them. Abraham switched to making sure that everyone had vodka for the toast, and the guests downed their glasses in one roaring out. To baby Catherine and to Catherine, her mother. Good health to both of them. Peter suddenly grabbed Abraham by the shirt tail. So, my young African, in church tomorrow morning. But, hold on, hold on. Should you be there, I ask myself, a pagan black boy in church saying his prayers for my little princess? We'll have to make a Christian of you first. Hey, everyone, baptism tomorrow for our pagan black boy. That'll be a fine first for Vilnius. Abraham simply stared at the czar. Peter wasn't much of a churchgoer, but he had been in church quite a few times when Abraham had been there too. Uh, your gracious majesty... You know that you see me in church many times. I, I, I don't need to be made Christian. I am a Christian all my life. Nonsense. Whoever heard of an African black who's been a Christian all his life? In any case, you were brought from Istanbul. If you aren't a pagan, you're a Muslim, like everyone else in the Sultan's empire. In his mind, Abraham suddenly saw the desert raider Kamal, his guard on the journey to the slave market in Abraham in Arabia. He saw in Kamel's hand the silver cross he had been given at his baptism. He heard him spit scornfully. Well, you're not going to keep this, are we? And he saw the cross spinning off out of sight, far into the dust and grit of the desert. He saw himself as Ibrahim, dressed as an Arab, then as a Turk, bowing to the holy city of Mecca five times a day, month after month. Quickly, Abraham shut the pictures out. <laughs> I am a Christian. 
he burst out fiercely, and I don't need to be baptized. Peter looked at him calmly. We'll see about that. In spite of the beer and the vodka, Peter remembered everything the next morning. He went round collecting his servants and officials. Sunday morning, time for church, everyone. Time to give thanks to, for my daughter. And I want to see my guests from yesterday. Off you go. Round them up. Where's my little pagan black? Oh, where's my young Abraham, African? Oh, uh, ready for your great day? Abraham stood, scowling furiously. So it really isn't one of his drunken jokes. He's serious, and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I shall be your godfather, boy. How would you like that? And I'm sure our gracious lady, Her Majesty of Poland, will be delighted to stand in as godmother. How about that, then? Royal godparents for our little black slave boy. A fine joke, hey? Not to say an extraordinary honor. Abraham began to hesitate. Well, this was a bit different than from his christening as a tiny baby, which he couldn't even remember in a country far away. A king and a queen as godparents? to welcome me to my new life in Russia? If only he'd behave as though he meant it as an honor instead of teasing me the way he does. Sometimes he can make me feel I'm really worth something, and the next minute he's doing his best to make me feel like one of his dwarves. Anyway, what choice have I got? So Abraham went along with the great crowd of last night's guests, trooping off to the church, a good many of them looking the worse for last night's drink. The Russian church in Vilnius was only a little one, since most of the local people went to their own churches. Peter led the way in, with the Queen of Poland as an honored guest, and as many of the others as could fit squashed inside with the rest overflowing into the street. Inside and out, there was a terrible din of clattering and laughing. It all seemed to be a big joke. Certainly Peter was in a jolly mood. Well, good people, he roared. It's not often in Vilnius we get to see an African jungle savage brought into the Holy Mother Church. It'll be a fine sight, I promise you. The priest had been warned about the baptism, had a great silver basin of water ready for the ceremony, and a long white robe for Abraham. Does the black boy understand what he is doing? He asked the czar. Does he speak Russian? I do speak Russian, cut in Abraham which made the priest raise his eyebrows, shocked at his rudeness. And I understand that I am doing this at the Tsar's command, but I am baptized Christian already in my own country, but his majesty will not believe it. The priest looked even more shocked, but he said, Will you put on the right robe to show that you are entering into a new life of holiness? Abraham pulled it on over his clothes. A small choir began to sing. The chattering died down and the priest began to chant, not in normal Russian, but in the old language of the church, which Abraham knew was used for all the prayers, just as in Ethiopia priests had used a special old language when they prayed. The Tsar and the Queen of Poland moved beside Abraham to take their part, and the priest asked them in Russian, What name is he to take? Uh, let him take my name. Christen him Peter. Abraham could not believe that he had heard right. You can't do that. I mean, I, I mean, your gracious majesty, that's impossible. My name is Abraham. I can't be christened Peter with respect to your name, sir. Nonsense, boy. Peter's a name you can be proud of. You should have a good saint's name, like a proper Russian. What kind of name is Abraham, anyway? Some sort of pagan, gibberish, Jewish, Muslim nonsense? We can't have a Russian name. No, no Russians called that. My name is Abraham. I was baptized with it in my own country, and you can't make me change it. It's in the Bible. Isn't the Bible good enough for you? I, I won't be called Peter. I won't be called Peter. Abraham started pulling the white robe off over his head and off his arms, panting and clumsy with rage. The church was quiet now as everyone stared. You can't make me. I won't let you. My name is Abraham, and I won't ever change it. I am a good Christian, as you are. And uh, your majesty, and and my baptism was as good as yours. I am who I am, and you can't make me into somebody else. He finally got the robe off and threw it down on the floor. 
He took a deep breath and then stared calmly up at the czar, arms folded across his chest. I want to leave this church now, and I want to leave your service. You cannot force me to say, I may be a servant, but I can leave if I wish. The church was deathly quiet. Peter stood, his face expressionless, his arms folded too. For a minute, then too, the giant czar and the young boy stood, looking each other in the face. Then Peter bent down, picked up the white robe, and straightened it out. He held it out to the boy. Will you be christened with your own name, Abraham, with me and Her Majesty of Poland as your godparents, as a sign that you are part of my family and that I will be like a father to you? Abraham gasped. A great sob rose inside his chest and tears pricked behind his eyes. He controlled them both. Why be weak now when he had been so strong? I've won. I've won. And they're not taking my name away. For a moment he could not speak. Then he said, Most gracious majesty, I agree with what you ask. And so for the second time in his life, Abraham was baptized with water. And for the second time, he had a blessed cross tied around his neck. Then he was anointed with holy oil. And then the service of thanksgiving for the baby Princess Catherine began. A couple of weeks later, they set off for St. Petersburg to see the two Catherines for themselves. But it was not the joyful meeting they had been looking forward to. That's the end of chapter 16.